iHeartRadio presents Podversations, a weekly discussion with the biggest names and influencers in podcasting. Hello and welcome to another installment of our iHeart Podcast Network speaker series. I'm Will Pearson, Chief Operating Officer of the Podcast Division. It's great to be with you. We are super excited about today's conversation. As you guys know, we love to have conversations with podcasters, with podcast experts, and with some of our fantastic partners, and today is no exception. We're going to be talking to some of our great partners at the NFL about our partnership, everything we've been developing, everything that's yet to come. And today I'm joined by Kevin Legrette, the president of iHeart Sports. Kevin, how's it going today? It's great. Looking forward to this conversation, Will. Hey, before we get to our friends at the NFL, I wanted to, uh, I, know, I know you're a veteran here at, at uh, iHeart. You've been running many parts of the company for quite some time, but recently were appointed to be president of iHeart Sports. I was so pumped to see this news because I know you're a huge sports fan. I've been leading us in this charge for a long time, but how's the gig going so far? It's going really well. You know, we've got great assets. You know, when you look at the Fox Sports Network, when you look at the iHeart Sports uh, Network that we have, when you look at the personalities from Dan Patrick to Colin Coward, you look at our owned and operated sports stations, then you look at these rights deals that we have. And now all of the unique brands that we're bringing into our sports genre uh, in podcasting, it's really an exciting time. It's operationalizing it and getting your arms around it. It's a little challenge. And that's why I lean into people like you and ask you your opinion on things that we can do and be doing better. Uh, but really excited uh, for the future for all of us. Well, we're, we're having a blast building this all together. So, well, as I mentioned, we have a couple of our friends and, and great partners at the NFL joining us today. We're joined by David Jarenka, who's Senior Vice President of NFL Media and General Manager of the NFL Los Angeles as well as Meredith Batten, who's the Vice President of Operations and Club Media for the NFL. David, Meredith, thanks so much for spending some time with us. Hey, Will. Thanks for having us on. It is uh, an exciting uh, start to the season. I know we'll talk a little bit about that, some of the crazy things that have happened so far this year, but it has been a really, really fun season to, uh, to see so far. But David, I wanted to throw a question to you first. Both of you have such interesting jobs at the NFL, and, and I love seeing and sort of thinking about the kinds of things that you get to work on day in and day out, because I know you oversee not only content and operations and the technology there for NFL media, but also thinking about where it's going, because there've obviously been so many changes with media and communication over the past several years. And so I, I wanna see if you could talk a little bit about that, what that's like day in and day out to, to be thinking about where communications are heading and, and how the NFL goes into those spaces. Sure. Um... Well, again, thanks for having us, Will. And, you know, we have to do that thinking about what's next while we're operating what's currently happening. And our owned and operated media group across NFL Network and NFL.com or NFL app, Fantasy, et cetera, we're reaching tens of millions of, of NFL fans every single month. Uh, we're three weeks into the season. To your point, we've had a great start. There's a lot of great storylines that we're following. Um, but yeah, the media landscape has shifted a lot over the last five, 10 years, and we expect that it'll shift shift even more. So uh, one of the ways that we think about how it's going to change is making sure that we're prepared for that change. So I think you're aware we just moved into a new state-of-the-art facility here uh, right next door to SoFi Stadium that allows us to produce all of our content across all of those different platforms. Uh, it's a completely format agnostic studio uh, content creation space that's prepared to create content for all the platforms we're doing. Uh, content on today, but also platforms that will that will creep up and uh, and come up over time that we'll create content for. Meredith, you've been with the NFL for over 14 years, and things have changed so much in media and the ways you communicate with fans. Can you touch upon some of the unique ways that you're going about that today that's different from when you started? Yeah, well, this is where I, I date myself a little bit, but when I, I started, we had a website, right? Social media wasn't even really a thing yet. And so, you know, we were most focused on serving our fans on our own platforms and, and that's all we really needed to worry about. And then, you know, with the proliferation of social media and all these other platforms where so many of our fans are spending their time, that's forced us to think about not just our own and operated properties, but how we're creating content for all of those different places where our fans um, where our fans are. And so that that's probably been the biggest shift that I've seen of, you know, not being able to just kind of be singularly focused, but really having to kind of understand the entirety of the media landscape, because, you know, with so many fans, such a large fan base, right, there are pockets of them everywhere and, and wanting to be where they are is, is important to us. 
And Kevin, Meredith has done a lot of things for us over those 14 years. She was uh, a lead on our product team. I think she was the first lead ever on our NFL social team uh, wow. before we had the, the hundreds of millions of followers that we have now. She's led our digital content group. She's overseen broader kind of business operations that include uh, our NFL network property. And then, as you all know here at iHeart, she's the lead on the NFL uh, as it comes to podcasts and how we're developing uh, new audiences and these emerging channels. So she's being a little bit bashful, but she's she's done and kind of seen it all here in 14 years. You know, you, you mentioned that audience and that that fan base. I think one of the most interesting parts of this partnership for us, uh, as we've gotten to know that fan base a little bit better, is just how, not only how huge it is, but how different the fan base is from one fan to another. And as we think about you know, the existing slate of shows. We came into this partnership with the NFL having seven podcasts that are distributed, you know, for a, a national or international audience rather. And then we're in the process of building six more in this, this first season together with many more to come. But I think what's so interesting about this is as we, we market and as we think about it, it's not just the diehard NFL fan or the, or the diehard football fan, rather, it's also more the casual fan. And David, I want to see if you could talk a little bit about that. As you think about marketing the NFL, it really isn't just those guys that are all for the X's and O's, sort of the stereotype of what we would think about. I wanted to see if you could comment on that. Sure. Well, uh, it's the full spectrum. I mean, the NFL is one of the few media properties that reaches, you know, 100 million plus uh, people in the United States. And we, our fandom is about 190 million strong. So when you're reaching that many people in the United States, you're going to hit um, people that come at uh, their fandom in all kinds of different ways. You're going to have the people that want to kind of uh, focus on their team. You're going to have the people that want to focus on the headlines across the league. You're going to have people, especially our younger audiences that come into the NFL through a player lens. There's so many ways in which people are going to come into their NFL experience and how it gets crafted for them is really important. And so whether it's, you know, watching a linear TV show or engaging with fantasy football, or perhaps uh, you're on a car ride and you're listening to a podcast, we want to make sure that we're serving those 190 million fans in anywhere uh, and in every way that we can. Hey, Will, a quick question for you. As you're thinking about podcasts and you're thinking about this partnership with the NFL, you know, how have you thought about this audience, this unique audience that the NFL brings uh, in when developing programs moving forward? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been, again, one of the fun parts for our team in thinking about this as we thought about that broad audience is realizing and in partnering with the NFL, we needed to create not just shows for the diehard fan, the fans that are truly into all of the statistics. Although I love the shows that we're developing in that category. There's a new show called Tape Heads where we truly do get into the X's and O's for those that are you know, stat obsessed, really getting to understand the game that know all the ins and outs. And then on the other side, you've got really, again, the more casual fan, those that are into the game, into the culture around the game, wanting to make sure they understand the game. And so we developed a show in this partnership called NFL Explained, which in some ways is modeled after actually one of the most successful shows of all time, one of our most successful shows for sure, called Stuff You Should Know, where it truly is getting into these various topics where we're saying, you know what, I would love to know the basics of this, of, of understanding like how instant replay came about or something just sort of more fun and playful like how did the NFL mascots come about and how did each team get their names? These kinds of things that are fun for conversation starters, just understanding the basics. And so it really does span that range with shows finding their places somewhere in between there. But I think also what's one of my favorite parts about it is even with something like NFL Explained, which is meant to be accessible for the casual fan base, those that may not know every single rule and every single statistic, but it's also accessible to the audience that would be because there's always something to learn, always something fun to take away and go, you know, be able to tell somebody else. And so, you know, actually just just thinking about that is 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 part of the fun of being able to develop all of this. And and, you know, David, I probably want to toss you this question around this as, as you guys think about it. You know, you already have those seven shows that I mentioned before and thinking about developing more shows what was it that made you guys decide, you know, we, we really want to be doing more in this space. We've already got a nice offering of shows and some shows that do really well, but we want to expand that. What was, what was the thinking in, in, in making that call? 
Sure. Well, I think if you look at our kind of current slate, starting with around the NFL, it's this kind of whimsical look around the league, this really intelligent, smart, funny way of talking about football. Mm -hmm. uh, and the around the NFL was a great kind of beachhead for us to get started. We also have our fantasy podcast, and then we have Move the Sticks with Daniel Jeremiah uh, and Bucky Brooks that kind of give you a, a kind of a team, general manager, how do you build a team, scouting. Both of those uh, guys are former scouts, and so they understand the personnel side. And so I think that gives us part of the offering. Um, but in developing these new podcasts, uh, take NFL Explained. NFL Explained mm -hmm. was a series that we were doing on the video side and doing some really interesting content in the past and thought that we could extend that here in a really interesting way with Mike Yam and Aditi King of Walla and have them explain fun concepts like I sat there and listened for 45 minutes about NFL goalpost and the origins of those goalposts and great uh, interview with Justin Tucker as well, who just kicked the 66 yard field goal to beat Meredith Lyons uh, yesterday, which was a lot of fun. Mm. So I wow. think the two of them do a great job. You know, they were just talking about Monday night football and their latest uh, podcast. And so just a lot of fun topics that whether you're a casual fan or, or an avid fan, uh, it produces some interesting water cooler moments. Uh, for you to understand different concepts about the league. So that one's fun. Our NFL Inside Report uh, is more of a storyline-driven uh, podcast that Rhett Lewis hosts uh, and works, whether it's James Palmer or Jane Slater in Dallas, working with all of our reporters that spend hours and hours with these different clubs and are only able to share maybe a minute or two uh, on our NFL Now TV show or game day morning on Sunday or digital outlets. But this is a, you know, a 40 to 60 minute outlet where they can really go deep and unpack their notebooks and really tell you what's going on across the league. And then uh, I know we have some new stuff planned. Maybe Meredith could talk about it with, you know, a different way that we could come at uh, NFL content and, and engage fans. Yeah, the, the one you haven't mentioned yet that I think you're alluding to is Split Ends, which launches next week with Colleen Wolf and, and Erica Tamposi. And, you know, Will, when you talk about, you know, kind of the audience and those seven, you know, what we did really well with those seven podcasts that we had was um, reach our male audience, right? So th those pods kind of skewed 90% plus male and, you know, the, that's one of the, the awesome things about the NFL fan base is it is so diverse also. And so with, you know, a, a significant amount of female fans, that was something that we really initially sat with with your team and said we wanted to make sure that we were making an effort to go after female fans. And that's not, you know, kind of as we we kind of joke about, you know, it's not overtly pink and fluffy, right? right. It, core football and so things like NFL explained and even just making GMFB into um, you know a longer form daily pod that show you know is so entertaining you know with with Kay Adams and Kyle Brandt those guys make football so entertaining all aspects of it so so putting that out so it can be more accessible to people but but then um, with tight tight um let's call it tight end split ends launching next <laughs> week you know colleen probably one of the most knowledgeable people you know in and around football and so could sit down and, and kind of school anybody but she is so entertaining and so engaging and and kind of her life in and around the sport is also fascinating she's always on the road and you know always mm -hmm. experiencing different things and so bringing her you know with Erica Tamposi who's the lead producer for ATN and you know regularly you know kind of has has a role there but bringing them together uh, to talk football in, in kind of a, a different way as two females that show is going to appeal to everybody just given their knowledge um, around the space but you know we think it'll really appeal to women too as they see, you know, women like themselves kind of being able to sit, you know, in that sort of space of authority, you know, uh, around around the sport. So we're yeah, really yeah. excited about that one launching too. I was telling Kevin about that show before we uh, before we started here. It's it's I've gotten a chance to to hear some of what's been recorded, and it's going to be a fantastic show. Yeah. As Will talked about, we're really excited about that. The interesting thing is we've spent a lot of time talking about audiences. We've talked about ways that we're going to evolve the slate of podcasts, but. The question that I wanted to ask, and I, I'm just interested both from Meredith and from David's perspective, is why iHeart? You had so many partners that you could partner with. Why iHeart? Yeah, I mean, I, I think what, you know, when we set out to find a partner, you know, as we kind of say, not, you know, too surprising, anybody can create a podcast, but getting listeners to that podcast is, is really difficult. And, you know, finding a partner who could really kind of help us push forward, you know, I think our, our goal here is, you know, we own the sport and really want to be, you know, kind of the leader of NFL podcasts. And so, you know, I think the thinking and the vision and the partnership of creating this podcast network and the promotional support and 
you know, what iHeart can bring to, to the table in terms of its footprint, not just in podcasts, but, you know, across the audio landscape, mm -hmm. the events, everything, um, the knowledge that you guys bring to the table, you know, we think iHeart is that right partner to kind of help us take this to the, the next level, um, to be, you know, kind of the leader and the destination for NFL podcasts. So mm -hmm. we're, you know, really, you guys were the perfect fit for that. You know, one of the, the the other fun parts about developing this is is not only thinking about the shows we're developing at the, you know, at the national level, but all of the all of the clubs getting excited about getting involved. That it's definitely one of the ways that they can communicate, you know, some most most directly with that fan base. It's been a lot of fun seeing that come together. I was really honestly just surprised at, you know, how great these teams were at already creating these podcasts and what that has looked like. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that? You know, maybe David to, to jump in first, just in, in terms of the NFL giving some guidance to each of the clubs that are involved and in, and in, and how they want to create, you know, podcasts for their own fan base. Some of the interesting things you've seen as they develop shows for for those more sort of local or regional fan bases. Yeah, I'll start and I'll turn it over to Meredith because this is really her area of expertise. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we as as a league. Um, you know, we are going to create content that's going to be um, kind of uh, interesting at the overall league or national level. And we'll, we'll certainly do content that's relevant to a specific club as well. If you flip it on its head, you know, a club is creating content that is specific for that local market. And at time, they'll touch on the national storylines. And so Meredith leads our club media group. And what we're trying to do is, is optimize the, the development and then ultimately how that content gets to fans and how we monetize it. Like, what's the best way for us to leverage our, our collective resources and create content and share content and work together so uh, that we can get this content to the right fan at the right time. And so podcast is an area of that. And, you know, working with our 32 clubs, you're going to get 32 different flavors of where people are in terms of content creation capabilities. And mm -hmm. part of our job is to narrow, you know, one from 32 so that we're all delivering at a, a certain baseline and a certain quality level. And you'll have certain clubs that are out there delivering more. We want to make sure that we're bringing all clubs to a certain level of, of capability and quality. Uh, and that's a key part of the, of the, of the role that Meredith's team plays. And uh, I think our clubs are uh, excited about engaging fans in this new space and finding ways that they can uh, receive some promotion for some of the great work they're doing. Meredith, I'm sure you can kind of add on to that. Yeah, the you know, the word that we kind of always use when thinking about, you know, kind of the the true opportunity for the clubs, you know, with podcasts, but, you know, kind of all types of content is, is access. And, you know, by that, we don't mean, you know, bringing Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers always to the table, but, you know, fans of a team, they, they want to know all the inner workings, right? Whether, mm -hmm. whether that's, um, you know, just kind of what happens on, on game day, you know, kind of inside the stadium or, you know, what, what the experts who live and breathe, you know, that club are thinking. And so by being able to provide that access to a fan base that's really getting them kind of in there, you know, as deep as possible, like no one else but the club can provide, um, you know, we, we think that creates a lot of opportunity. And so, you know, we're excited. There's, you know, I think every club already has, you know, at least one podcast, some that have a dozen. And so, you know, we're excited to kind of bring them into the fold here and, and kind of you know, create this network. And so to be able to surface, you know, some of the, the great work from the, the clubs, um, you know, in addition to the NFL and, and, and kind of showcase that access. So it's been pretty amazing at talking to the clubs individually with Will over the last few weeks. And, you know, from the biggest clubs to even some of the smaller uh, markets, just how engaged they are with podcasting and getting their message out and more importantly, telling the story. Because the one thing we know is the narrative really means a lot to the fans and the fans want that deeper engagement. But I guess this is for, you know, David and for Meredith. When you think about like the evolution of sports and where it is, there's a lot of factors at play right now. You've got the shift to streaming. You've got the fact that you do have those deeper fan engagement. You've got this huge rise of sports gambling and what's going on with sports betting. And then you've got technology as a force multiplier. I was just wondering if you could touch on it, you know, either one of you, just kind of how you're compartmentalizing that and more importantly, how you're able to serve not only the league, but the individual teams with those things converging on you. You know, I, I grew up probably similarly to the way some of you grew up where there was a, a single TV with a single remote and my dad held that remote and my dad <laughs> was a Cowboys fan. And that meant we were going to watch the Cowboys every Sunday. That's how I became a fan. 
And I have three kids. I know Meredith has one kid. I don't know if anyone else has kids here. They all have remotes. It's their phone and they do yeah. whatever they want to do uh, whenever they want to do it. It's on their time. So everything is different. All the fundamentals, all the conditioning of behaviors is completely different for this generation than it was mm -hmm. when, when we were kids. Uh, I'll put us all kind of in the same age bracket there. That's um, right. And so um, I think you have to start at the fan, at the behavior um, and understand that that's completely different. You also have to realize that, you know, kids at this generation are used to seeing a lot of complimentary content and not just a single stream. I'll give you an example. I took a friend of mine to a football game in Seattle about eight years ago. And it was the first time his son had ever been to a football game. His son looks at me, I actually looks at his dad and says, dad, where's the yellow line? He literally thought the yellow line was on the physical field. And so is used to seeing this overlay of information that isn't present when you go to a stadium. Now, clearly, there are a lot of other things that are positive and present at a stadium, like the sounds and the smells and all of those good things. But, you know, this generation is used to having this kind of heads up display type information like a game. They're used to seeing all this complimentary content in and around the main thing. And so I think if you understand that, their way of uh, all the other content that they're exposed to uh, challenges us to understand how are we going to make sure that that NFL content is living and breathing in that space. And I'll give you an example of that. If you go into our fantasy app, you can manage and see the results of your fantasy team while you're watching the live game. Yep. And so that's just a small example of uh, a utility uh, and an experience that's pretty delightful for fans. And we're going to continue to have to make sure that the fans are capable of of kind of watching and engaging with NFL content while they're able to do all the other things around their 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 friend network and their broader social network that are important to them. Yeah, you see that happening at the games themselves. Was at a game not too long ago, and so you're watching the game. And then you're around people that are each, you know, whether they're following a Twitter feed or whether they're following the live stream and like the amount of information intake, you know, we talked about before about this being this wide range of casual fans to the, to the diehard fans. But I feel like the, the level of entertainment of the information that comes in and the way that it can be presented, you probably see a lot of converts from people who come in as casual fans. And then you can't help but to get into it when you see the statistics around things. Or we were talking earlier about the longest field goal in the history of the right. game kicked the other day. Like you just get into that. It makes you want to go look up the stats and the fact that it's that much more accessible. I think that's probably part of what we try to create here, right? Is, is the ability for people to really get into it and, and learn so much interesting information about the game that it just, it makes it that much more fun. I don't know how you guys keep up with it. I'm sure that you listen to every single episode of every single podcast for every single club to keep up with it. But it's, uh, it's, Meredith uh, does that. I only listen to every other one, Will. So that's right. I'm a little bit behind. That's right. But Meredith, how 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 do you? I, I know I say that jokingly, but how do you keep up with all the activities and everything that you guys are are doing? Because there's just so much interesting stuff to keep up with. Yeah, well, I mean, that that's the beauty of, you know, having that the phone, right? I, I have a three year old. And so he most often dominates the television. But so, you know, Sunday mornings, I'm watching game day morning on my phone while he's watching Sesame Street, right? And so, but that, <laughs> that, you know, flexibility and accessibility is, is, is key. Um, it, it's impossible to keep up with all of it. But, um, but, you know, I think that's where um, just being able to, to kind of offer such a variety of, of things yeah. and, and being really smart about what we're choosing. We keep talking about NFL Explained, but, you know, that concept initially came from us, you know, kind of being able to, to kind of query top Google search results mm -hmm. around what are people asking about the NFL. And so, like, clearly that's emphasizing, you know, areas where people are interested and have, you know, have that question that they, they want answered. And so, you know, trying to be kind of really smart about how we're approaching some of the content we're creating, but then also um, where we can, to the extent we can, you know, putting, uh, not just talking podcasts, but, you know, any content we're creating as many places as possible, that's kind of necessary these days as people are consuming things, um, you know, in so many different ways, but, you know, the thing, interesting thing I've, you know, found about podcasts in the last years, year, two years during the pandemic, right? Like I, even with people home and commuting less, and I think, you know, you think, oh, I'm, you know, podcasts are for when people are commuting, but, right. but you know, 
engagement stayed high as people were out taking walks more and looking for different ways to escape. And now back in the car, you know, and or commuting, however, um, you know, it just kind of, it, it's a seamless, um, seamless medium that, you, that it really is so flexible. So that, that's, you know, what I think is really, really kind of interesting, you know, take on podcasts versus some of our more video heavy content. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a super interesting point in terms of consumption. You know, when, when the pandemic started, um, you know, one of the things we were thinking about is, is how would people change their, their audio consumption with that decline in podcasting as people were no longer commuting. And we really, it was an unknown, right? We had not been in this territory before. And, uh, and fortunately, in that case, people just found their new routines and they found their new ways to, to work around things. And, and it actually, to the point you made earlier, we've seen nothing but a continued surge in consumption. People just found the times, whether it was, you know, getting ready in the morning, whether it's when Kevin's on the Peloton breaking all those <laughs> records of his own or whatever it may be, people finding those times to, to fit that audio into it. And, you know, what, one category that I, I think we've, we've not talked about a little bit is is the history of the game. You know, NFL fans love talking about um, the most amazing games in history or things that have happened over the years or getting to revisit conversations with so many interesting players that maybe you guys can speak to that a little bit for those big, you know, history of NFL fans out there that we're also touching on that in, uh, in the podcast space as well. Meredith, I don't know if you want to take that one. Yeah, it's um, it's a good question. Yeah, we've talked a lot about audience, but but format was was sort of another kind of topic that we dove into with your team. You know, when once um, you know we started the relationship, but you know we know we had a lot of news and and kind of you know analysis, but 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 we weren't really tapping into that storytelling um, format or genre, which you know with NFL films as part of the family you know, they are the best at, at some of that, um, you know, kind of historical storytelling and with the, the vault of content that they have access to. And so I think that's, you know, one of the, the other podcasts to launch in November, NFL Films, um, Tales from the Vault and mm -hmm. stop tapping into, you know, Steve Sable and some of the, you know, interviews that have maybe never been heard in their entirety. Yeah. So, you know, the NFL Films team, you know, coming up with that idea, you know, it hits all of those things. It's it's that access and that storytelling that they're so good at, but then also, you know, kind of appealing to that type of audience that really wants to dive into some of that history and, and hear some of the this legendary storytelling. So we're really excited about that one um, for all those reasons as well. Yeah, and I, and I love what we're doing uh, with your team, Will, and, you know, Meredith leading it on our, on our front, working with our creative teams here in LA, but also uh, with the creative teams in NFL Films. I think, you know, we've talked about, you know, not just being content with what we're going to launch throughout the rest of the season and calendar year, but how do we get ahead and do more going into the off season and use that as a springboard going into next year. So thank you and your team for all your partnership as well. Absolutely. Meredith, any, any parting thoughts from you? Yeah, I'll, I'll just add, yeah, you know, a little bit of a tease. We were already sitting with your team talking about the next slate, you know, of podcasts that we're, you know, wanting to start launching soon and, you know, tapping into more of, you know, the amazing talent at NFL media and, um, you know, with films, you know, uh, the idea around, you know, getting into the mystery genre and, you know, Tom Brady's lost Jersey, right? Like all those types mm -hmm. of great stories. So we're just excited to, you know, kind of keep talking about all the great content that, that we're going to be able to bring out together. So it's good stuff. It's really exciting. And Kevin, I don't know if you've heard, but the Super Bowl is pretty close to you this year in LA. We're ready for it. We're fired up. We're looking forward to continuing to build up this partnership. Yeah, it's good stuff. Well, Meredith, David, thank you guys so much for everything you're doing in the partnership. And thanks for spending some time with us today. Podversations is a production of iHeartRadio. You can find more from the biggest names in podcasting on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts.